Okay, so at the very beginning of class, week one, we talked about goals, where you want to be, and the, what you're trying to accomplish through your modeling career, right? So I'm gonna just jot some ideas down here for you guys to follow through, to kind of work on your success path as a model and understand what you need to do to get there. And currently, let's just say, this is where you're at right now. And your goals, where you wanna be, this is your desired result. And our, our job now as a business owner, as a model, as a photographer, whatever you wanna do in life, you're always gonna be thinking about this pathway, where you're at versus where you wanna be. Right? So we have to create some type of pathway to get, how do you get from one point to the other? So first let's talk about what is the, de what is the desired result? Just kind of shout out some of your goals that you, how do you know when you got there? How do you know when you're successful as a model? I'm getting paid, so income. Yep, a agency, what else? Recognition. Recognition, influence. I'll just put that as one, abbreviated. What else? How do you know when you became successful model? What's the desired result? Yeah. Okay, so, right, yeah, so you want to make new goals. When you've already achieved something, so like achievement, you've reached there and now you want to create new things. Growth. Yeah, I was, that's the one I was, I was waiting for, publications. Right, we want publications. Yeah, <laughs> specifically Vogue. Billboard, okay. So when you guys are watching the replay on this, you're just, yeah, this, blue, this blue ink is not really showing up on camera, but the, the audio will be there, okay. So all right, all of these things here is kind of like a, a desired level of status. We want to achieve a certain level of status. These are most of the answers I, I predicted that you guys would say, I'm psychic. And so how do we get there? What's the difference between the model you are today versus the model that achieves, achieves these things. What does this model need to do in order to accomplish that? Literally, as you could shout out some more answers here. I, portfolio. Portfolio. Even, even, even to, to create an established portfolio that's gonna reflect these things, you have to have something that everybody needs this one thing here. I'll just give it to you. Skill. Yeah. So you need to develop the skill. Yep, all of those things, work ethic. Work ethic. All right, we. <laughs> no, these are good. I'm glad you guys are glad you guys are thinking it through. All right, this is. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a doctor in another life. 
<laughs> so we need to have the skill. And in order to develop these things, right, it's just the transition, right, is going to take time. You, it takes time to develop the skill. You need work ethic, discipline, all those things. In order to build a portfolio that is going to reflect the desired result to achieve this level of status or income. All right, just speaking very linear, linearly. So there's a way that we can speed up this process in order to showcase a portfolio that reflects these things, particularly growing your income and achievement, is, you know, you want to, let me change the color here. Let me see, I'll just use, do I have green? No, I got two blues. Let me get another one. We want to speed this up because most, I noticed that people who are kind of starting day one on their way to get here, they could be maybe at this point on the graph at two, two years, two, three years. They're like, okay, I've been, I've been working on this, but I'm, no, I'm not close to the goal. I'm now feeling stuck. I'm feeling frustrated. What am I missing here? So we want to speed this process along. We want to go fast. We want to kind of just jet over here and move fast. If you want, some of these things actually you can attain at a very early stage in your career. There are people who get on billboards or who get published, not necessarily in Vogue, but they're doing these things very early in their career. It can almost work counterintuitively if you get too much success too fast and you're like, wow, this is easy. This is something I should just continue doing. And then you start developing the skill and portfolio later and you're like, oh, this is actually kind of like hard work. It's taking longer than I thought to get maybe the income, et cetera. So how do we move fast? How do we move fast? So let me go to my notes. All right, so we want to move fast. How do we get there? How do we achieve the status? Time, skill, portfolio. So let's, let's specifically talk about income because I know as you're going through this process, that becomes almost like a deterrent of how you're going to get there because it is expensive, right? We have hair, makeup, wardrobe, traveling, all these things, nails that come into play, right? So let's talk about that. In order to get there, uh, we have, let's go, who is your customer? Who are you going to charge for your time? Because after you develop the skill and you start to develop your portfolio and you're like, okay, I know how to pose on camera. I know what I'm doing. I'm professional. I show up on time. Who are we going to be charging for this? Who is paying? Who's going to pay you? That's an H. So how do, how do models get paid? Let's name some ways. What's that? Photographers. Photographers can pay you. Anyone is not the right answer. Anyone is not going to pay you. Specific people are going to pay you. Agency. Agencies, brands, photographers, um, business owners. Business owners will pay you, especially if you're doing some content for their social media. It could be a hair salon, it could be a restaurant, it could be a clothing, uh, clothing owner, even like a facility like this. You know, he has his own brand or his services. He might want to hire somebody that's professional, knows what they're doing for their time. Uh, let's see if we missed anyone. Oh, who else can pay you here? Other models. Other models might want to pay you. 
So this is typically the, the range that most models probably don't even think about in consideration of how do I get paid for modeling. They're just going straight to agency or waiting for maybe a brand to have an open casting call in order to have an opportunity to submit to. But some of these other things you can be doing on your own if you have the skill set. Because you have to have the portfolio and you have to have the skill set in order to teach someone else. If you're too early in your career, you won't have the respect or the credentials for someone to be like, why should I listen to you? Right? So on your way to the desired result, you start developing your, your portfolio and your skill. And now you can start ranging into different people that you can charge for your time. So all these people, anyone else I missed? No? OK, I know where the cap went to that. Um, so these people will pay you. And how do you determine what your rate is going to be? How much should you charge? That's going to be your next question. It's like, OK, I'm here now. I think you're somebody's DoorDash. I think Brianna. Uh, yeah, you developed your skill. You developed your portfolio. You've been in this two, three, four years. And now you're looking to make some money professionally. You know your categories. How much should you charge? How much? So I was actually talking to Evan about this last week, I think. And as far as like different type of services, like how do you know what you're going to pay? So the way I go about that is I always consider what does it cost me in order to do that, right? So we were talking about earlier, models, you may have to pay for makeup, hair, clothes, nails, what else? Travel. Travel. Nope, that's not an expense. We're talking about them paying you. Skin care. Some of these things, right, you're doing on a regular basis, so it's not necessarily you have to pay to get that done for the shoot unless you have to do something special. <laughs> oh, waxing, yeah. <laughs> right, so we'll just, we'll, we'll just call it like self-maintenance. Self-care, yeah. All right, so especially for you women models, you know, give me an estimate. How much does this cost? Assuming, assuming you don't have any of this done and you, you booked a photo shoot, someone's inquiring for your time, they want to shoot you, and you now are in a position where you have to get all, if not most, of this. Okay, so we're at $250. <laughs> Is that not realistic? It could be somewhere between... 250. Right, this. Okay. Okay, we, we got it. <laughs> it's going to vary, right? It can depend on how much of self care you're doing on a regular basis, right? So, on the low end, assuming you already have your, your nails done and you got your skincare and some waxing done, right? So maybe at the minimum you have to pay a makeup artist and you already have clothes in your closet that you could fit for the theme, right? So at the minimum, a makeup artist, how much? Is it 150 a face? 100? All right, so $100 plus travel. This would probably be the 
the main thing that you're looking to have an expense wise unless it's take, being taken care of for you. So minimum expense, probably about $100. Now, that's not including profit. The way you determine how much you want to walk away with, sometimes it can become of how skilled you are, um, how popular you are, you know, things of that nature. But it can also be determined by your morals and ethics. So what I mean by that is if uh, someone hires me for a project and it's maybe something that's in my realm of doing, but maybe I'm not familiar with it, you're still trying to figuring it out in, in those stages, I'm considering how much does it cost me to do this? I might have to rent some equipment for my camera in order to get this done. And then how much do I wanna walk away in my pocket? Because I'm thinking, how much time is it going to take me? Especially if I have to drive to the Bay Area. You know, so that's two hours there and back, plus gas, plus toll. Plus, I know I'm going to be hungry, right? So I, we didn't even consider food here. You might have to take a day off of work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. And then how long is the shoot? Right. It could be a six to eight hour day now, especially if you're traveling. How much do you want to get paid? walking away after expenses for eight hours of your time. This is a full day rate. I think most models will probably start somewhere about 50 bucks an hour, maybe 40. What's 50 times eight? Someone do the math. $400. So yeah, maybe you're now your profit is like 300 bucks. Is it worth your time now? Does $400 sound like enough, even though you can get your makeup done and provide all these things and show up and go and kill it, you're skilled now, is $300 worth your time? Some people will say yes, some people will say no, depending on the project, right? So what's gonna happen there is to determine, and this can be local, so maybe your travel isn't that, that much, right? So Determining if $50 an hour or 300 bucks, $1,000. Sometimes you are basing that off of what is the budget of the client, who you, which one of these people are paying you, and what are you gonna be delivering on top of that service. So it's not just you showing up and looking cute, right? So you're showing up on time, you, you came well prepared, you're not, you don't have to be posed and you know that you're gonna deliver the result that they're looking for. Maybe it's a particular project or um, a variety of expression that they're looking for, yeah. Knowing when to charge and when, when to charge is important too. Right, so knowing when to charge. So that's the next step we're gonna go into. Let me change the color again. When do we charge? How do I know when it's appropriate or not? Another question? Okay. <laughs> so when you charge, we have something called opportunity value. Opportunity value. Does the opportunity, is it greater than your cost? Or is it equal? <laughs> or is it less? <laughs> because, but, no, because, okay, I only say that because personally, I'm at a point where I'm no longer building my portfolio. So collaborations to me are only, I don't charge for collaborations if they only add value to my portfolio. So if we're going somewhere doing something, I have to pay for makeup and hair and wardrobe, and the photos aren't photos that I think will be quality or, or would elevate my already established portfolio, then I would send my rates. Versus if this is a photographer who is like from a pro and he, his photos or whatever, or her photos are going to elevate my portfolio even further, then I would do a collaboration in that sense. Right, so the opportunity value, the photographer is adding to your portfolio or their style, um, what they produce is such at a high level that it's either equivalent or has surpassed your own. Right. All right, so, or the brand 
It could be a super dope brand that you really like, that you support, and you wanna be on their resume, you wanna be on their social media. So yesterday I did a, a quick interview. If you guys are in my broadcast channel on Instagram, I kind of dropped a little video in there and I made like a super quick YouTube and I was talking to the model. She's from Sacramento. She's done stuff with Skims. She's done stuff with Amazon, Black & Decker, all this stuff. We used to work together for this, at the state. And now she's, you know, she has all this stuff on her resume. Even her modeling for Skims, she was paid $1,000 for that, which now is high on the scale of things considering the expenses, but it was in LA. And she had to go to LA twice to do that. She had to go to LA to audition for it. And then she had to come back and, come, and then go back again for the actual shoot day. So considering now travel, where you're staying, food, she actually probably lost money on that. But the opportunity value was greater than the cost. So I'm now willing to go and do this because it's adding to my portfolio, right? So now this is how you know when to charge and when not to cost. Is this greater than the cost? The problem is a lot of models don't consider these things and everything is free. Everything is like equivalent. Everything that's an opportunity that you wanna do, you're just doing it for free because you know, you just want to get out there, you want to take pictures, you want to start shooting, you know, and it could be a little bit of fear of asking for the payment because what if they say no? I don't want, I don't want to pay you for that. I'll just find somebody, some, another model. And if that's the case, because that'll happen, it happens to me all the time, that person is just not your customer. If they're not offering a greater opportunity than the cost, and you say, okay, great, I would love to shoot with you. Here's what I can do. Here's my portfolio, here's my website, here's my media kit, I'm a professional now. And they say, oh, I don't have a budget for you, that's okay. Or they just leave you on red or whatever the situation is. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a form of rejection, right? But you're standing in your power in that. This is no longer worth my time because I'm here now. So I want you guys to get to this place of charging for your time and understanding how much do I charge and is it worth it? Okay, so let me look at my notes. And is this when um, that one thing that Fatima was talking about comes in handy? The, that one um, media kit? Yeah, that's when that comes in handy? Right, yeah, so your media kit would come in handy here when you're having a conversation like this and you're weighing out the opportunity, what is this shoot about? Are some of these things gonna be provided? Wardrobe, makeup, et cetera. Okay, and maybe it's just like, dude, I would love to do this. Just give me some gas money. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's fine too. Yeah, that'll, that'll happen. So on your journey to creating your ideal portfolio and your goals, as a beginner model, you're working with these photographers, usually who are also beginner photographers, and then you grow as a model and they kind of stay stagnant. They're not really there anymore, or they're, they're still cool, but the, the quality of work doesn't represent the direction you want to go in. And now it's like, I built a relationship with this person, we're friends kind of in a way, and now they still want to continue to work with me because they see me growing and I no longer want to work with them and it can kind of get into like some hairy conversations. And so you do have to find a way to like respectfully decline people at some point if they're not elevating you. You had to add to that? No, okay. So that, those are great questions. So, and how do we determine? So we got photographers and we have models. This is who pays who? Does the model pay the photographer or does the photographer pay the model? Yeah, so we'll, we'll do uh, the photographer's level of experience is going to matter here. And so is the, 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 the models. So you got a beginner, right? You got uh, advanced and uh, you got expert. <laughs> 
And same thing for the model. Yeah, photographers won't typically ask you because they're, we're in a position that people will reach out to us, we charge for the photos because also photographers will charge because we, we have the lighting, we got all this equipment, literally costs thousands of dollars. Sometimes we have to pay for studio fees. And then after the shoot is over, our job isn't done, we gotta go and spend time editing. That could take another few hours. So we spend more time than anybody else in the creative process to create these images at the end of the day. So the photographers most likely are going to charge you, but let me break down for everybody how we can change that. So again, beginners, they tend to pay beginners. All right, you want a different color? Black? I use black. No, this black isn't working here. This is. <laughs> Let's use red. <laughs> okay. Is that better and is it worse? You guys can draw this on your own notepad, right? <laughs> I actually will send you guys some PDFs. So I have this like saved and I'll show you a screenshot. Um, so beginners typically work with beginners. This is like a trade situation. It's TFP, trade for pictures. Same thing here. These people are trading, experts trade with experts. This is where it's really gonna get like confusing if I don't change colors. So I'm gonna use, I'm going back to blue here. The beginner, if you wanna move fast, right? So we're talking about building your portfolio in a way that brings you from beginner to expert. This is entirely perception. The better quality photos you have, the more variety you have in your portfolio, all those things are gonna bring you closer to here because perception, like, wow, look what this person is doing. Look at the crazy poses that they've accomplished. Look at the lighting on this. And you just hired expert photographers. You went straight to here. So if you, as a beginner, you're typically gonna hire the advanced person and you're gonna hire the expert. And but the beginner photographer, they are willing to hire the advanced model and the expert model because these photographers are building their portfolio. So it's kind of like, it's almost like it's backwards now. Once you get to expert, you go back to working with beginners because the beginners are willing to pay you. They're like, oh, you're so dope now, I want to shoot you because your portfolio is crazy, you're doing this, that, and the other. All I gotta do is not worry about clicking the button on my camera and I know I'm gonna let you do your thing. And sometimes the photographers be a little bit more aggressive. They're like, oh, do this, do that, pose this way. And you're like, dude, I'm the expert. You know, you're learning, that's cool. And sometimes you go through that process of the photographer's direction versus what you already know you're capable of. But getting paid from photographers, if you want this to happen, you gotta be over here. Because why would, why would an expert pay a beginner? Unless they needed somebody for a project and it was already paid for, and they're just kind of finding somebody to fill in some shoes. It can happen, but you want to get paid? Become an expert. This is a huge deal. First things first, you're going to miss every single shot if you don't take it. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And you can charge like, I know, $5,000, $10,000. No matter how many times you got doubted, we're, we're here. If I want things to change, I must change. Me being on the back end of the planning of Model Bootcamp, I've seen just how much value Chris is adding to this. There is going to be a level of professionalism and a level of opportunities that most models in Sacramento have never seen before. I got to learn a lot about how to get signed with the agency, how to get paid. Because I didn't have guidance, 
And because when I first started out, I didn't really fully know what I was doing, there were moments where I was strongly discouraged. Only surround yourselves with other people who also know their worth. Everyone doesn't have to see your worth. It's you seeing your worth. Yes, there's a skill set involved. You do have to learn the skill. You have to master the skill. But what good is the skill if you never put in the effort behind it?